wonderful chance to kind of step out as a solo artist and do music that touches my life and has touched my life for so long. Um, I have to back up even before, you know, the Backstreet Boys started 14 years ago. It's just, it's funny how all this happened. It's been, uh, it's been an amazing ride and a wonderful experience to be able to have all that knowledge from the pop world in making a CD and putting it together, such as the Welcome Home CD. Um, but the response has been amazing. It's been a little overwhelming, to be honest with you. Um, I've had families, moms, dads, uh, little boys, little girls come up and say, you know, oh, you've touched my life and you've inspired me in a way. And um, I don't really get that from the Backstreet Boys side. You know, I might get, oh, you brought our family together. You helped me through a hard time. But uh, it's been a different kind of inspiration, um, faith-based through Welcome Home. So it's it's been surprising, but it's also been very flattering. You know, I think as a solo artist, you know, I, I have to be different than a Backstreet Boy. A lot of people know me just as a Backstreet Boy. They don't know me as a believer or even a solo artist. Some people don't. And um, that's okay with me. Um, but in putting this record together, I wanted it to be really what I'm about uh, as an individual. I'm a man of faith. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a lot of things that kind of get tossed uh, to the wayside when you stand on a Backstreet Boys stage. And I really wanted people to know who I was and really what makes me tick in life. Um, and that's my family and my faith. So I wanted to put you know as much of my family in it as I could to, to really tell who I am as a person. Well, there's a lot of great uh, contemporary Christian or traditional gospel music out there today that wasn't out there five, six years ago. Um, and it influences, I think, everybody, um, not just in the music industry, but you know, the people that are entrenched in the music industry, such as the artists. So there's a lot of great stuff out there that, that influences me. I'm, I'm already writing and putting together my brand new record that's coming out at the top of the year. Um, got some ideas, got four or five songs that I'm itching to kind of get out of my head for a little while because they're stuck in there. But, <laughs> um, you know, you're, you try to always be influenced by uh, your surroundings and what's going on. You can't really be that focused where you can't be affected by other things around you so um, it, it makes us who we are our environment so uh, um, I think being open to different styles of music and different artists is, is a good thing I grew up listening to contemporary Christian and country and pop and gospel and you name it but I hope that you find a lot of those different styles stirred up into one pot on the welcome home CD <laughs> well as a little boy growing up singing in a Southern Baptist Church, um, I'm a fan of the big choirs and the, uh, the gospel choirs. Those are the things and the styles of music that have really moved me and touched me in a, in a different way that no other music has really been able to do. Um, so we did a little bit of the gospel choirs and um, stuff like that because I want people to be able to listen to a record from start to finish and be you know, influenced by a lot of different styles and hopefully they found that in the, in the Welcome Home CD. I would have to pick two different styles. I would probably start with uh, I would start with "We Lift You Up" because I wrote "We Lift You Up" about nine years ago, um, and I knew that it was going to be on a record, whether it was going to be on my record or somebody else's record in in the gospel gospel community. I wanted it to be known out there, um, so I start with that because that's diff definitely a different style than uh, being, you know, kind of I was in Vienna, Austria in 2005 in Europe traveling on the Never Gone Tour and I was missing my family and and that's where Welcome Home you know the song and the title track for the whole record evolved uh, right there in a hotel room so um, hopefully I'm growing as a writer so I, I can't really pinpoint just one thing because just like I said you're gonna find a lot of different styles of music that have made me the artist and the man that I am today um, there's a song that I can't really give the title about yet but uh, <laughs> there's a song that I'm, there's two songs that I'm extremely excited about um, that I'm recording for my new record. And um, they're, uh, I like story songs, story songs that uh, they talk about family. Um, those are normally the songs that I write um, because they touch me the most. But um, uh, there's, there's two in particular. And like I said, I don't want to give anything away just yet. <laughs> But there's one that's very, very powerful, and then there's one that's a little more subdued and, um, you know, more of the traditional love song, but a, but a different style of love. So.
So, Sorry, I can't give anything away. <laughs> just, that's right, that's right. It's, like, it's, it's top secret. Or, yeah. <laughs> um, I was asked by uh, Mac Powell, who's the lead singer of Third Day, um, to be a part of the project or see if I would be interested in being a part of the project. And um, the the best part about the project is is not necessarily the company that's involved on stage, but the actual scripture that we're pulling these songs from. Um, you've got 66 books in the Bible. And there's a lot of scripture to be told. Um, and a lot of times people don't connect directly with scripture. When you read a Bible verse in the Bible, you may get a completely different meaning or a different understanding than I would. And I think through song, a project like the Glory Reveal Project is um, little do people know that they're being blanketed and covered with scriptures that are right out of the Bible. Um, and that means a lot to me. Um, that's the way I live my life. And, and hopefully... Uh, people get something out of that, you know. I think, you know, as a writer and a producer, you're always looking for, for new avenues or, or new things. Um, we make music so far ahead of time before the actual, you know, consuming public gets a chance to buy it that uh, you kind of have to think outside of the box. So hopefully as a writer and a producer, I'm influenced by anything and everything that's going on today versus something that's going on six months from now. So, uh, but the stories are there. You know, anybody that's inspiring to write stories, you can find them right out of the Bible. <laughs> um, one, that it's okay to stand up for what you believe. Um, two, to be, uh, uh, to be a respectable ind individual in your community. Um, I like to, I've, I've been adamant about standing up for what I believe, uh, even on the Backstreet Boys stages versus the solo stages. And um, I look for somebody that has a, an inner confidence that, that really knows who they are as a person because just because I'm on stage doesn't really depict who I am as a person off the stage. And um, even though I'm that same person, you'll find that same person, but it doesn't dictate my lifestyle, what I do um, in my everyday life. And um, hopefully, you know, the traditional uh, stamped Brian Littrell fans are... Uh, I hope are, are like me. <laughs> as broad as possible. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah.